God bless you. Thank you for joining us. I'm Minister Billy Burton and welcome to our new teaching series called Understanding the Tithe. For a long time now, there has been a need and a demand for this type of teaching, and it is my humble prayer that what you get out of these lessons will be the word from the Lord that you've been asking and praying for, that feeds your spirit, frees your soul, and brings you into maturity concerning the will of God and the tithe. This series is brought to you by Inspirational Minutes Ministries International, Healthy Java Talk, and those of you who faithfully support our ministry work with your contributions and your prayers. We have every intention of reaching you right where you are, and we ask that you share our lessons so that they can help as many people as possible. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook where you can listen to and read these lessons at a time that's best for you. Our Facebook link is conveniently posted below. Our background music, Tucked in Bed, is composed and performed by J. Mann at www.ourmusicbox.com. First, let's pray, and then we'll get right into this lesson of Understanding the Tithe. Heavenly Father, I can't thank you enough for giving us this teaching series of Understanding the Tithe. Lord, I am excited yet humbled that you would use me and continue to use me to bring forth something that is as important to your people, your word, and the heavenlies as this is. I thank you, Lord, for using me, for what you've done and for what you're doing, not just for me, but for your people everywhere. Lord, you know who will become your people, or should I say, you know who are already your people. Bring them, Lord. Send them. Cause them to stumble upon the series and give them a desire in their heart to listen to it, read it, or to take it in and eat from it in whatever form that they see it. Speak to them while I speak to them, Lord. Give me what you want me to say, but let them hear what you want them to hear. In the name of Jesus the Christ, Amen. This teaching series, Understanding the Tithe, deals with God's economics, the way God's kingdom operates concerning the tithe, how to recognize God's blessings from the world's deceptions, and how to receive what God has already sent you to the fullest. Whether you choose to tithe or not, you're learning how the tithe functions. You are receiving secrets, revelation knowledge, and inside information about financial history and how God operates outside of the manipulations of the world's systems. God's Word helps you to see things the way that God sees them. My assignment is to expose hidden benefits and traps so that you're no longer blind about what's available to you and so that you'll be stronger and wiser in your faith. Economics is the area of knowledge concerned with producing goods and services, buying wants, selling needs, and the transfer of wealth, control, freedom, privilege, and opportunity. Economics involves mental, physical, emotional, material, and even spiritual prosperity. The Bible tells us that everyone is given a measure of faith, and that measure is the resource necessary for you to accomplish what God would have you to do in this earth. The measure can be built upon and increased, or it can be diminished until it literally becomes dead. Either way, it is you who are responsible for the works that accompany the measure. In the book of Hebrews, chapters 9 and 1 through 11 and 1, the author takes us on a sacred journey 
into the mind and the heart of God concerning his creation, mankind. We're allowed to eavesdrop on an eternal conversation that took place in the heavenlies, revealing God's will for an untainted covenant relationship with his earth managers. Because of Adam's disobedience, this kind of relationship could only be accomplished by the blood of Jesus. You'll notice that the scriptures talk about a new and living way. The relationship brought forth by Jesus' work and all of its blessings and inheritance are later referred to as a better and an enduring substance. You'll hear the word substance again as our scriptures move us forward. In order to reestablish man back into fellowship with God, Jesus made a management decision. We need to realize the substance that we have access to in heaven. It is very important that we understand that the enduring substance spoken of earlier, being in heaven, is Jesus, his binding relationship between God and mankind, the benefits of all the work that he did, and what it means to us relative to our standard of living here on earth, as well as eternally. In Hebrews 11 and 1, the Bible goes on to say, now faith is the substance. But let's pause there and make it clear that the Bible is saying, now that you have a grasp on what substance means, it's time for you to know that God identifies that substance by using the word faith. Faith is the name of that substance. This means that upon birth, every boy and girl is given a measure or a degree of faith. It is through this faith that we place a demand on the promises of God and lay claim to what he told us we can have if we believe. God established the rules of relationship before he created man. So obedience to the rules is non-negotiable if you want the desired results. The tithe is a kingdom key activated by 10% planted in a fertile ground ministry in obedience and faith. Remember, faith is the substance of the things you're hoping for. That relationship acts as evidence of what you don't yet see with your natural eyes. Greater faith gives you clearer and further reaching vision. The more you can spiritually see, the more you can physically have. This is episode number 71 of Understanding the Tithe. The title of this lesson is A New Possible and the Tithe. Your scriptures are Malachi 3 and 10, Matthew 16 and 19, Luke 18 and 17, Romans 12 and 3, and Hebrews 9 and 1 through 11 and 1. Let's repeat those. Your scriptures are the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 19. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verse 17. The Book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 3. And the Book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 1, through chapter 11, verse 1. Believe me, there are things that could be yours that are yet unreleased in heaven. The tithe is a kingdom key, binding and loosing things in earth 
as they already are in heaven. In review, one of the ways to identify a kingdom key is to know that it has the ability to loose things into the earth that are loose in heaven and waiting to be manifested in your life. What you thought was possible in your life due to your own natural efforts pales in comparison to what you can experience through the tithe. Be a mature adult in God's word but maintain childlike belief. The whole idea of operating by faith may initially sound easy or at least a fair command to follow. However, many things tend to get in the way of obedience to the will and ways of God, which is why we are supposed to come into his presence as a child. This doesn't mean to act childish. God requires innocent trust. Remember the dispensation of innocence when everything was paradise and God walked with man in the cool of the evening before the falling away of Adam? God's kingdom government was in place and man had everything that he could ever need and more. Isn't it exciting that something as simple as innocence can make a giant difference on what you get out of the benefits of the tithe? It's easy to believe for something that you've seen and had before, but do you have the faith for what seems impossible? Are you planting with pretty little tulip faith? but expecting an oak tree forest? With the tithe, it's not about how much you plant because you can't give more than the tithe, remember? The tithe is 10% of your gross income, period. Nothing more and nothing less. So even if you gave more towards the tithe, it would automatically be seen by God as a different offering that he would honor and bless you for. This is about the measure of faith you're using. The substance and relationship you've poured out towards your tithing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but sometimes we fall back on our creature habits and try to box God in to something that he's done before. We see what he's done before as good enough, and we'll take it if we can get it. But God is always greater than where he met you the last time. The question is, have you come up in your faith? I can remember a time when I was out and about making runs and taking care of business, as we say, when I looked and realized that I needed to stop and get gas. I pulled into a relatively busy gas station in what appeared to be a safe area. I had my son with me and he was pretty young at the time, maybe eight or ten years old. So a degree of my focus was on making sure that he kept up with me as I made my rounds and stops. Upon entering the gas station, a guy coming out held the door so that I could grab it. And as I pulled the door open wider, there on the floor right in front of us, at the entrance, was a pile of money. If you've ever found any money, you know the feeling that kicks in. It doesn't matter if your pockets are already full or not. There's a feeling of surprise, excitement, and unbelief that rushes you all at once, and you'd better decide quickly what you're going to do. What was strange is that the gas station was busy. People were coming in and out and no one seemed to see it. As a matter of fact, some were even stepping over it 
almost as if to be careful not to step on it to get it on their shoes. I quickly looked to see if anyone was claiming it, and no one was, so we did. People went around us as we picked it all up. He put some in his pockets, and I put some in mine. I continued to the counter to pay for my gas that I came to get and didn't even talk about it until I had pumped my gas, left, and stopped at the restaurant where we were going to pick up lunch. I told my son to empty his pockets onto the seat and I did the same. I also told him that whatever the total came out to be, we would split it evenly. The total was close to a couple of hundred dollars, and I kept my word. There were other gas stations in that area, so I really didn't have a set one that I'd stop at as a norm. Initially, I'd stop at the one that seemed a little less busy so that I could get in and out like everybody else. But guess which one now was my favorite gas station to stop at? My creature habits had kicked in, and now I was expecting to find money every time that I went to that location. Of course, it never happened there again. And the interesting thing is that I really don't believe that my son expected it to, like I did. He was a child and had moved on, but there I was, boxing got in to a gas station as if it had become a blessing location, when he only chose to meet me there once. Are you guilty of doing something similar? Have you ever been blessed in an unusual way, but now you want to make it comfortable and common? Heaven is full of blessings, and God can fill you up and still have no lack. Is there anything too hard for God? God wants to pour out heavenly exposure upon you because of the tithe. It's high-end things so that you're not easily excited by the temptations of the world. There's a big difference between just being obedient so that you can say you did it as compared to truly standing on your faith relationship and faithing your all. The tithe is steady, sustainable, and true, but results may vary, and sooner or later you'll come to the realization that tithing, with great expectation of what's new and what's possible, does make a difference. There is nothing in the world that will do you more good on this earth than salvation. If you would like to claim Jesus the Christ as your Lord, Savior, and King, please repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I have been taught your word, according to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. At some point in my life, I heard it. And I trust and believe that I can only be saved by grace through faith. I renounce and denounce everything that I know is wrong and against you and your kingdom and I accept Jesus the Christ as my Lord, Savior, and King, speaking with my own mouth, according to Romans 10, 8 through 15, that Jesus the Christ is the Son of the one and only, true and living God. I thank you, Lord, for his work on the cross, for his decision in heaven to come in my stead, and I accept and receive everything, all inheritances, all blessings, and everything that you have for me. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. Have the eyes of your enlightenment been opened? Is your heart excited about what you've just heard? If you would like to donate and support our ministry and work, please send your contributions through our PayPal. The link is posted below. All gifts are greatly appreciated, and there is no gift too small to matter. 
We're not asking that you donate to receive this teaching series. You're already receiving that for free. What we do ask is that you consider our honor system. If our teachings have helped you in any way, or if you'd like to support our upcoming book series called When Tithes and Offerings Won't Pay the Bills, please give through our PayPal account at Healthy Java Talk. The link is listed below. We welcome your gift of any amount. Make sure to watch for the release of my book series, When Tithes and Offerings Won't Pay the Bills. Remember to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive notices when we post new lessons. Come back and join us here again next time, God willing, for another lesson of Understanding the Tithe. Our background music, You On My Mind, was composed and performed by J. Mann at www.ourmusicbox.com. God bless you.